Welcome to episode 8 for our ReactJS and AWS serverless tutorial series and in this episode we are going to write infrastructure as code using the serverless framework for creating an AWS Cognito user pool. So let's see where we can use this Cognito user pool and as you can see the first use case is going to be for writing the sign up and sign in flow for our application. Also we can use this same Cognito user pool for authorizing the API gateways that we have written so far in our application in the last few episodes. Now let's discuss how this second use case is going to look like as we are already having some API gateways that we have developed now we are going to be attaching an authorizer and this authorizer is going to be nothing but the Cognito user pool that we are going to build here and if the user that comes through the API gateway are authenticated from the Cognito user pool they are going to get the access for the lambda function and the steps for building this Cognito user pool in the first step we are going to build the serverless template and then in this template we are going to write code for exporting the resources that we are going to need and then once the values are exported from the stack then we are going to use them in the index.js file currently we are back in our backend project structure and in this we are first going to define the file where we are going to be uh, creating our Cognito user pool related stuffs. So we navigate inside the resources directory and inside the resources directory we will create a file. Let's call it Cognito user pool dot yaml. So we are going to be writing our Cognito user pool related stuffs over here and then from the serverless just like we have the functions declaration we are going to need to write something for resources as well and here in the resources we can again declare like we have done before so we would say file and in that we are going to pass the path to our cognito user pool.yaml so we will say resources Class cognito user pool cognito user pool dot yaml okay so now our serverless file is currently connected to the file where we are going to developing the resources for our cognito user pool let's see how we can define the resources so we will have to first say resources like this and then here we are going to be uh, creating our resources and for that the first one that we are going to need is called cognito user pool and for every um, resource that we are ever going to write through serverless uh, we always need to define two very important thing the first one uh, that would ident identify which type of resource it is that we are going to create and then also to create this particular resource there would be some properties that we are going to be needing so we will have to write something like this type and properties the type and properties are basically going to look something like this so what the type we have defined here is called uh, AWS Cognito user pool the properties are the few important attributes that we are going to need for creating this Cognito user pool and the first one uh, or the very important one is the name of the attribute that we are going to be using for creating a new user and in our case we have selected it to be email so users can now log in or sign up by using their email so that's what it means so let's create the second resource here and the second resource is basically going to be creating an app client connecting to the user pool that we have already created and the code for that is going to look something like this so it's going to be called cognito user pool client and the properties is basically going to have one major step which is called the user pool id and user pool id is going to refer to the user pool that we have defined earlier so this app client is now connected to the user pool what we have written here in this particular step we also need the client name like what is going to be the name of the client that we are going to be using here and then it needs to mention a particular auth flow okay 
and we also need to mention generate secret whether we want it or not let's create the identity pool and the related roles now the purpose of creating the identity pool is to enable our app to use a federated identity pool based on the app client that we have used so far and the code for that is going to look like this so first of all the type is basically the identity pool that we are going to create and previously we have created the user pool client and now we are going to be using the user pool client as the provider for the identity pool that we are creating so if you see inside the properties we have first of all the name of the identity pool and then we specify whether we want to allow the unauthenticated users to pass through or not uh, we have set that to false so unauthenticated users are not going to be passed through and also we have set up something called cognito identity provider and inside cognito identity provider we are giving the client id reference to be the app client that we have defined in the last step and then we are also creating the provider name which is getting the value from uh, user pool and the provider name itself so now we are going to be creating the im role for this particular identity pool let's see how does it look like um, the type of this uh, resource is going to be identity pool role attachment and you can see that we have added the reference of the identity pool id to be the one that we have developed in the last step now we are going to be defining the role for this particular identity pool cognito auth role and we will define this in the next step cognito auth role is basically going to control the policies for any authenticated user again i have already copied the code and this is how this is going to look like that looks a little long but uh, stay with me it's not that big to understand here so the first part is defining the type and the type for our case is going to be an im role we always have to Def, uh, declare this part which is the assume rule policy document what are the policies are very important here uh, if we want to allow this particular role to have an access to s3 then this is how we are going to define it uh, if we are going to give it an access to a particular rds then again we can define it here as well after this resources has been created the next logical step for us is basically to go and export them so that the front end can use them uh, and uh, start using the cognitive user pool now we are going to be writing the output section and the values that we are going to be outputting are definitely going to be this few so user pool id the client id the identity pool id and the auth role though we are not going to need the auth role for the front end integration the first three items are very important for integrating it with our front end application and let's take a look at which one are these that we are exporting from uh, this particular file so the user pool id is nothing but the cognitive user pool that we created in the beginning then user pool client id is basically the app client that we created in the second second step and after that the identity pool id that we created in the third step and then the particular roles that we had created are basically going to be helping our identity pool when it is deployed okay we are almost done but before that uh, we need to fix a few errors first of all the resource says declaration uh, needs to be separated by a space here so this space is needed and then i go back to the cognito user pool declaration and here when we declared the cognito auth role the type and properties were tapped by two times so this is now the correct indentation now everything looks good all these cases have like type and properties separated by one tab from the resource declarations let's go to the backend directory now so i would say cd backend and here i can actually run sls deploy and if i try to run sls deploy from this directory now it will try to redeploy my stack that has been updated uh, by adding the cognitive user pools declaration but if there is any error it will uh, pop up right away and what i suspect that there would be an error because in many cases i have 
um, declared self custom stage but if we go and check inside our provider section the stage is directly uh, written inside the provider itself so it will not find something called custom uh, stage that's why it should fail but we will see if that's the case i will wait for it to compile and yes so that's an error so let's try to fix this to fix this what i'm going to write is um, i would say custom and inside custom i need to define something called stage so stage and the value for stage uh, is something that we can refer from the provider stage what we have written so far so what i can say is uh, dollar and then um, self provider dot stage so now our custom stage is basically referring the provider stage that we have written and run the serverless deploy again uh, let's try to do that and hope that there is no other error that exists okay it's going oh there is an error um, so it's saying that the user pool ID cannot be created uh, looking into the code for our YAML file but uh, I can see that the output is not properly formatted and basically it has to be in the same level where we have defined our resources so I need to delete one tab before this outputs uh, declaration section and now if I try to run SLS deploy hopefully it should be deploying our stack okay uh, I had reused this particular export name in an earlier stack I can modify the export name with something called uh, maybe YouTube um, test hyphen external call me the auth role for tab okay um i will have to try it again and the error previously was very straightforward because i had reused this particular export name in an earlier stack and that's why it stopped working so the update is in progress now if you observe that the client name i have modified and added something called yt test uh, same goes for the cognito user pool and I did the same thing for the identity pool part so our cloud formation stack is almost finished it started doing create in progress for the identity pool it also did create in progress for the user pool client and then it started creating the cognito auth role that is defining the role for our identity pool and Finally, it did all other stuffs which was uh, happening earlier as well. So now uh, we can see that our stack is doing an output of the user pool client ID, the user pool ID, and the Cognito auth role, etc. So we are going to be using these three items in the next part of our tutorial series where we will integrate this particular Cognito uh, user pool with our API gateways. And We'll see you there.